Assalamu alaikum everybody. I just thought I would reply to you guys via video on some of the comments that you guys have made on my previous videos. Um, I'm not going to reply to all of them obviously because although I've been doing this for a long time, I don't post often, but I do have a lot of comments from really old videos from when I was like really young and had a netbook and not even a laptop and used a headset to record. So with absolutely no editing apps and skills, which I still don't have. So about prayer, this one says, the Sunni wudu is a complete wudu and is much more respectful to Allah than a Shia wudu. That's how you know who puts the most effort in his belief. Um, I don't even know what how this is logical. First of all, what I showed in the prayer video shows the absolute basic. You can do more like wash your nose and wash your mouth, but those are not mandatory. Those are not actually written in the Quran. So I don't think the way most put, puts most effort in his belief. I don't even think that makes sense. For those of you who are saying the Quran says this, means wash your face and hands till elbow and wipe your head and feet. Sunni so say you must wash your feet too. Yeah, this is right, brother. That's exactly what I quoted according to the Quran. It says to wash your face, hands up to elbow, rub your head, then feet up to ankles. Exactly. So when it's referring to wash, it's referring to wash your face and hands up to the elbow, which is why we do the wash with the water. You put fresh water and then you wash it down and then rub or wipe your head and your feet up to your ankles. That's why we don't wash our feet. Now, someone had written something like, oh, you're so gross. How could you not wash your feet? Um, I don't think you realize that wudu is like a spiritual cleanse. There's a lot of parts on your body that you are not cleaning specifically during wudu in order to be prepared to pray. These are mandatory parts that should be clean in general, a lot of private areas or your, you know, underarms and stuff. They should be clean, but it's not part of wudu. And just because you don't wipe or wash these parts of your body during the process of wudu does not mean that you are dirty. It just means that it's not part of that spiritual, physical cleanse that is mandatory to do before you pray. I guess what I said basically goes for this other person who wrote... Um, my dear sister, may Allah guide you. You should try to understand that wudu is not only a spiritual cleanse, but also physical. For example, if someone was walking without shoes to the masjid, it would not be sufficient to just wipe the feet, but to wash it. And the same applies to other limbs. Peace be with you. Well, peace be with you too. I see that there are replies here, but um, this person's wrote a really nice reply there. Then why did Allah in the Quran order us to wipe? Are you saying you know better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Um, so I think what, what the problem is here is people are misunderstanding. They're getting confused with like showering and hygiene with wudu. These are two very different things. Being clean and hygienic is just a bare minimum that is required of us as humans, as Muslims. We should be clean. We should be tahir at all times, which is why we don't wipe after the bathroom, we wash. Um, we should just be clean in general, it's it's the sunnah. Now, when you are ready to pray, you are cleansing. You are not, this is, this is a spiritual cleanse. So, you know, obviously there's a lot more depth to it um, that I can't go into here because I'm not knowledgeable enough. Uh, I wish I was, but there is so much more to wudu and prayer in all our acts than what it looks like on surface level. So at the end of the day, the Quran says to wash a certain way, wash and wipe, and we do that. Someone wrote, and what about putting water inside nose and mouth? I know that a lot of Sunni brothers and sisters do this. It's not mandatory. We can do that, but again, this is not required of us to have a... Um, Proper wudu. You Shia are very funny. Well, I'd like to think we have a sense of humor. Thank you.
So someone wrote, and I had already replied, but I think it's a good one to mention here. Someone said, uh, thank you for this video. I'm looking into Shia Islam and slowly converting to it. MashaAllah. What about your piercing? Do you not have to make sure the water goes inside the hole of the piercing? I have a total of four piercings, nose, both earlobes, and on top of the ear. When I did with the Sunni way, we wash our nose and ears, and it says you have to make sure the water is going inside these holes. Do we not have to do that in this case? So I was able to, um, so obviously the ears are not included in wudu, so you must try to get all the areas, including the crevices in your nose when you are doing wudu. So I was able to contact the sheikh, and so I was able to confirm that there's no need for water to make it inside the piercing. However, if you just have a stud that sits on your skin, um, just like when you wear a ring, a watch, or a bracelet, you can either remove it so that the water helps get you know in between you could take it off completely you could take your nose ring off completely or what I do is I just pull my nose rings out they hang out on the side while I do a little and then I push it back in when I'm done and with my ring same thing so you some people just put it up over here and then back down so I love the Ya Ali in the background love you loads love you too sister sorry I don't have it in the background here I'm in my office, which doesn't have anything interesting yet in the background. When Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was alive, there was no Shia sect. So where is Shia come from? So this probably requires an entire video to reply, but neither did Sunni. Let's just say that. These sects are just labels, but the term Shia is also in the Quran to be referred to as the followers of. So when we say we're Shi'at Ali, we are the followers of Ali, meaning after the Prophet had passed away, we are the followers of who he appointed, which is Ali. It shows our loyalty to the Prophet by being loyal to his family. So that's what Shia means. But technically, in terms of what the word Sunni means, we also follow the Sunnah of the Prophet. Yeah. You Shias are bad people. You come from the line of Yazid, very bad people. Actually, it's quite the opposite. There are people who I know who are Sunni who are actually named Yazid. And you will never ever find a Shia person named Yazid. If you look into the month of Muharram and the events of Karbala, which we stand by and mourn for and grieve every single year and throughout the year, it is because the person Yazid and Muawiyah and those people were actually oppressing the family of the Prophet and the followers and the lovers of Ahlul Bayt Aliyam Sana. So no, we do not come from the line of Yazid. Or maybe some people do, uh, and they have found the truth and follow real Islam. Islam does not discriminate based on your lineage and where you come from. So someone asks, sir, can you teach the right way the Shia females pray? Um, we basically pray the exact same way as males do. Uh, there's a few things you can do additionally, like when um, we are standing and we go down for ruku, uh, for a male, he should be going down so much so that his back is flat. But for a woman, she doesn't have to go down as much, so she can just kind of go on a 45 degree angle. And when you go down for sujood, it's uh, recommended. Um, I've heard this, I've never been able to confirm, but she was a reliable source that I trust. Um, it's basically good to make sure that your elbows touch, so not just your palms, but your whole hand is down and touching the floor when you're doing sujood. I once read that you should write Allah, M-A-S-H-A, and then Allah. Uh, as I wrote, and you must be careful when writing in Arabic, but Allah knows best. Allah knows best. You are right. I just make sure when I write it that I write Masha, and then when I write Allah, I capitalize the A. Assalamu alaikum. I'm so happy to find you, sister. Finally, I find a Shia Muslim female vlogger. May Allah bless you and reward you in this life and the hereafter. It's very, very sweet. Um, I am proud to be a Shia Muslim female. 
I guess you can call me a vlogger. I don't know if I actually vlog, but yeah, thank you so much. Someone wrote, I thought you have to start with your hands first. I mean, technically you're wetting your hands in order to have the water to start with, but that's not technically a part. Thank you, sis. May Allah bless you and your family. I really love your channel. Peace and love from Germany. Peace and love back to you, sister, from Canada. I I was taught to pour water onto your arms with a handful of water as opposed to under a running tap. So you can do both. I actually just feel like it's much easier and quicker. And it is so meant to use less water and less waste. So um, I'm able to just kind of let the water drizzle a little bit and wet both hands and then, you know, go from there. It's much quicker, but you can definitely do it that way. I also find that putting your hand under the running tap can guarantee that the water spreads along your arms. So when you are wiping, there's no dry areas. I find that sometimes with the limited amount of times you can actually pour water, uh, you don't really get the water everywhere. So it's just a preference. Uh, can you also do wudu like in a different way? My mom tells me in a different way and my grandma is also saying it in a different way. Yeah, I mean, there's there's the basic of what uh, I showed in my video. And then there's the alternatives like I just spoke about with the running tap versus pouring water. And then there's the additional steps that some of our Sunni brothers and sisters do that you could do that are not mandatory, but they're just additional. Respect from Pakistan, respect from Canada to Pakistan. Why is it better for girls to do it one way and boys another? I'd love an explanation on this. I think it's referring to when I said that women start the wipe from the inside of their arms and then the outside, and men start from the outside and then the inside. And I would love to give an explanation on this. However, I don't know. And I feel like a lot of things we don't know, and that's okay. We should continue to question and try to find the answer. Um but sometimes we can't, and that's where faith comes in. Wake up, you don't even clean your mouth or nose, it makes no sense. Yeah, this is wudu, it's not a shower. So that's my answers for this video regarding the video, uh, how to do wudu in Shia Islam. So I hope I was able to clarify some things. And I know some of those comments I already had replied to, but I just wanted to do this publicly because there were a couple questions that were asked by the same people. And I'm sure that there are people out there who are wondering the same things that were being asked. And it's nice to have them answered out in the open so you have answers to them. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and subscribe, like, and comment. Uh, if you have nothing good to say, please don't say anything at all. However, I do appreciate questions and comments. Okay, take care. Ma